fight under his banner against sin, the world, and the devil. Come here. All right, now come back here, son. Stay out of there. That's the Spencer's yard, okay? You see this line? That's not crossing. You understand? Hmm? You understand? You see this line? Look at here. Look here. Okay, now come back here, son. Come on back here. I'm not going back to school anymore. Ah, oh, Scout, it's just the first day. I don't care. Everything went wrong. The teacher got mad as a devil at me and said you were teaching me to read all wrong and to stop it. And then acted like a fool and tried to give Walter Cunningham a quarter when everybody knows Cunninghams won't take nothing from nobody. Any fool could have told her that. Well... Maybe she's just nervous. After all, it's her first day, too, teaching school and being new here. Marcus. Now, wait a minute. If you just learn a single trick, Scout, you'll get along a lot better with all kinds of folks. You never really understand a person until you consider things from his point of view. Sir? Till you climb inside of his skin and walk around in it. But if I keep going to school, we can't ever read anymore. Scout, you know what a compromise is? Been in the law? Uh, no. It's an agreement reached by mutual consent. Now. Here's the way it works. You can see the necessity of going to school. We'll keep right on reading the same every night, just as we always have. One day, while taking a look at some vistas in Dad's stereopticon, it hit me that I was just this little girl, born in Texas, whose father was a sign painter, who had only just so many years to live sent a chill down my spine and I thought where would I be this very moment if Kit had never met me or killed anybody this very moment if my mom had never met my dad if she'd have never died and what's the man I'll marry going to look like what's he doing right this minute 
Is he thinking about me now, by some coincidence, even though he doesn't know me? Does it show on his face? For days afterwards, I lived in dread. Sometimes I wished I could fall asleep and be taken off to some magical land. But this never happened. I never really knew why she came back. But I didn't care. It was like olden times. We was like peas and carrots again. Every day, I'd pick pretty flowers and put them in a room for her. And she gave me the best gift anyone could ever get in the wide world. Just for honey. And she even showed me how to dance. And well, we was like family, Jenny and me. And it was the happiest time of my life. What about marriage? Does that get easier? That's hard. We used to have a lot of fun. Lydia would come with me when I made the movies and we would laugh about it all. Now she doesn't want to leave the kids and she doesn't need me to be there. The kids miss me, but they're fine. It gets a whole lot more complicated when you have kids. Yeah, it's scary. It's the most terrifying day of your life, the day the first one is born. Yeah, nobody ever tells you that. Your life, as you know it, is gone. Never to return. But they learn how to walk and they learn how to talk and, and you want to be with them. And they turn out to be the most delightful people you will ever meet in your life. Mm, that's nice. <laughs> you are <laughs> merciful God. He destroyed his own beloved rather than let a mediocrity share in the smallest part of his glory. He killed Mozart and kept me alive to torture. 32 years of torture, 32 years of slowly watching myself become extinct. My music growing fainter, all the time fainter, till no one plays it at all. His. Good morning, Professor. Time for the water closet. And then we have your favorite breakfast for you. Sugar rolls. He loves those. Fresh sugar rolls. I will speak for you, Father. I speak for all mediocrities in the world. I am their champion. I am their patron saint. <laughs> 